Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Outlook by Calkai Media. My name's Sage. The Juneteenth National Independence Day holiday kept the US financial markets closed on Monday and Friday's close was mixed on the US equities market. The Dow Jones fell by 38 points or 0.1 per cent but the S&P 500 index gained 0.2 per cent and the Nasdaq index lifted by 152 points or 1.4 per cent. The Dow Jones last week shed 4.8 per cent, the S&P 500 fell 5.8 per cent and the Nasdaq lost 4.8 per cent. The mining index in Australia dropped about 5% on Monday and with Australia's cold weather instigating higher energy prices, the ACCC is investigating electricity price gouging. An important announcement was made by St. Louis Federal Reserve President James Bullard when speaking at an event at AXA Barcelona School of Economics on Monday. President Bullard was quoted saying US inflation expectations could become unmoored without credible Fed action. The economy has historically not been in a situation where there are extremely high inflation figures coupled with stooped interest rates. In 2000, the Nasdaq fell hard. It dropped constantly, falling approximately 78% from March through to early October in 2002, which led to the recession of the early 2000s that lasted about two years. However, the index didn't regain its swagger of highs until 15 years later. And we're clearly in bear territory at the moment with both the S&P and the Nasdaq being over 20% down. Former Fed Chair Alan Greenspan commented on the dot-com crash as having investors who were irrationally exuberant and that the 2010s clearly shared similar dynamics when they crashed during the GFC. Both eras shared growth over profits mentality on Wall Street and in heightened accelerated retail investing with a focus on growth focused companies. This led to the wipeout of many tech darlings of the era and we're seeing similar patterns emerge with Netflix being down about 70% from its highs and the trend in the cryptocurrency markets. The crypto market has lost roughly $1 trillion in value year to date in a close to uncomparable sell-off. And this week could see more falls before the market has a chance to rebound. Since June the 8th, energy utilities and materials have been the S&P 500's worst performing sectors, dropping 20%, 12% and 14% respectively. But before June the 7th, 2022, these sectors have been up 65% up 2% and down 5% respectively. European share markets rose strongly on Monday and the Pan-European Stock 600 index gained 1.0% with bank stocks being up 3.3%. European Central Bank Chief Christine Lagarde has confirmed there are plans in place to raise interest rates twice over the coming months and France's CAC 40 index added 0.6% although muted compared to the German DAX which lifted 1.1% and the UK FTSE which gained 1.5%. This could be due to the French President Emmanuel Macron losing the absolute majority in the upcoming French parliamentary election. In London's trade, shares of Rio Tinto fell by 1.0% and BHP shares shed 1.6% as well. Now the leading gainers include Grove Collaborative up 67%, Soundhound AI up 49.81% and SWVL Holdings up 35%. However, on the losing foot, the major losers were Addix Therapeutics down 55% and Tough Built Industries down 51.48%. We'll now cut to a short break but we'll be back. Stay with us. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Welcome back after the short break. And on Friday, U.S. Treasuries traded mixed. The U.S. 10-year yields fell by 8 points to near 3.23%, but the U.S. 2-year yields increased by 1 point to near 3%. In the global oil market, the prices moved higher in Monday's volatile trading session, the focus being on the tight crude supplies over pressures from inflation leading to slowing global economic growth. The Brent crude price rose by $1.01 US or 0.9% to reach 114 US dollars and 13 cents a barrel. 
And the base metals traded mostly higher on Monday. Aluminium rose by 1.3% and copper lifted as well by 0.3%. This is after hitting nine-month lows with recession fears looming. Onto the gold market and gold futures prices rose by 10 US cents approximately, being less than 0.1% to reach 1840 US dollars 70 cents an ounce. Spot gold traded near 1838 US dollars an ounce in the afternoon trade. Next Tech AR Solutions Corp, a metaverse stock, was up close to 27% yesterday during Monday's trade. They have partnered with Spotify to provide AR services through their Artisized 3D product enhancing the online shopping experience. AI stocks saw some price action with DocuSign being up 6.58%, Datadog being up 4.44%, Atlassian Corp up 7.73%, as well as Twilio being up 6.72%. The meme stocks were also up with GameStop being up 7.48% and Robinhood Markets being up 4.35%. President Joe Biden was reported saying he was proud of Apple's retail workers in Towson, Maryland. They stood up for themselves and voted over the weekend to form a labor union at first for the tech giant's U.S. stores. He was quoted saying workers have a right to determine under what conditions they're going to work or not work. And Apple's stock is up 1.15 per cent. Biden also held meetings recently with union organisers from Amazon and Starbucks. He advocated the unions saying that everybody is better off including the final product because of labour unions. Amazon's stock is up 2.47%. Thank you for joining us on the Morning Outlook. Hope your day in trading goes well. Do keep watching Calcine Media for more market insights and expert talks. Sage here signing off for now.